President. Mr. President, may I make a motion? Unanimous consent request. The chair, the chair recognizes the senator from North Carolina. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, Mr. President, I didn't have any intention to speak today, uh, but one of the blessings of being a freshman member is you get the opportunity to preside and hear the arguments that are going through the uh, chamber and the discussion about the SCOTUS nomination. And, that, and the SCOTUS nomination is something where we're going to have to agree to disagree with our friends across the aisle. Well, let's take a look at what's going on here. In North Carolina, over the past 24 hours, some four people have died of a drug overdose. We had more deaths to, uh, associated with drug overdoses than we had with car accidents last year. So what's going on here? Back in 2008, there was an opioid epidemic. There were supermajority in the U.S. Senate, there was a Democrat in the White House, and majorities in the House of Representatives. No action. In 2010, the epidemic is growing. In places in New England, in the Midwest, down in the South, people are dying, and yet there was no action. Now this Congress has taken action, and I think it's time to move the CARA bill to hold hostage the CARA bill and shift the discussion to a, a genuine disagreement that we have with the minority on SCOTUS is literally costing lives. For those who sit here and want to hold up the CARA bill for the purposes of discussing the SCOTUS nomination, we don't even have a nominee yet. There's going to be plenty of time in committee. There's going to be plenty of time on the floor to debate this difference of opinion between the minority and the majority. But in the meantime, for people who would hold up passing the CARA bill over the SCOTUS nomination, what are you going to tell the two people, two friends of mine, who over the last week when they heard my speech on the Senate floor come to me and say, thank you for moving this bill. I lost my son a year and a half ago. Two of my friends have told me, thank you for helping us increase the visibility and get to a point to where we're saving these lives. What are you going to tell people who are holding up the CARA bill, those who would hold up the CARA bill, what are you going to tell the first responder who, if they had naloxone, could potentially save the lives of somebody who's fallen on the floor and dying? What are you going to tell them? What are you going to tell the law enforcement officers who are trying to go and help people live, who have succumbed to addiction and opioid abuse? What are you going to tell them by holding up this bill? What are you going to tell the parents who are struggling, who need help with education, who need help with their incarcerated children, who may have succumbed to addiction, did a wrong thing, they're in prison, and now they need help. They need to be rehabilitated. They need to be saved. You know, at some point, we need to recognize that we do need to do things separately. We need to recognize it's disgraceful to hold up the CARA bill over a genuine disagreement that we're going to have for months. I'm one of the senators in the, in the Judiciary Committee that signed the letter. I do not believe, until we hear the vote of the people, that we should hear a SCOTUS nomination. But I'm not here to talk about SCOTUS today. I'm here to talk about saving lives. I'm here to talk about addressing the addiction problem that is growing. I'm here to talk about the sad, heartbreaking stories of families across this nation who are starving for help. This bill helps. This bill appropriates over $100 million that can be spent between now and the end of September to save lives. If I come to the floor tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about four more lives that have been lost in North Carolina, some that could have been saved if we would just do our job. There's a lot of discussion about doing our job, right? Well, let's do our job. Let's do our job today. Carol getting CARA passed. Mr. President, Mr. President, I'd ask my colleague from North Carolina to yield to a question. Yes, sir, I yield. Thank you. I appreciate the courtesy. And I just so understand just what you're saying. A week ago, I held, in the, uh, I held in my arms a father whose son had committed suicide waiting for treatment. So I understand the importance of the bill that we have before us. But my question is this. I don't see why we can't do both things at once. The senator, just let me ask my question. The senator from North Carolina has sat with me while we've debated important bills on the floor and met in the Judiciary Committee. And all of a sudden, at the last minute, the rug is pulled out from under that meeting. It was scheduled, CARA bill was scheduled to be debated, and we could meet in Judiciary Committee. I'm sure the co my colleague will admit the issue with the Supreme Court is important too, just like CARA is. So could he explain to me why we couldn't do both? Have our meeting in Judiciary Committee, let those who wanted to be in Judiciary Committee speak there, and let those who wanted to speak on CARA speak here. No votes were scheduled, I'm right about that, correct? So just explain how one delays the other. Well, Mr. President, uh, the, uh, 
You know, I, I actually, I was Speaker of the House in North Carolina for four years. I like a good scrap. I don't have any problem with going to a committee hearing and explaining why I've taken the position I have on the judicial nomination, but that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about over the next 24 hours, four more people who are going to die of overdoses in North Carolina. I'm going, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I say to that mother and that father that's saying, well, gosh, you know, things just got gummed up here because we've decided to connect two unrelated issues. One has to do with the Supreme Court nomination, and that's very, very important. It's critically important, I, I get that. But what's more important than saving the lives of people that we know are gonna die? The data is compelling. Folks, we've just gotta to get to a point to where we get Washington working again, and you don't do it by playing this chess. I'm not an attorney, I'm not a constitutional scholar, but I am a father, and I am somebody who spends a lot of time in my state. And I think we reached a point to where we need to get serious with this. We're creating obstacles on CARA that don't need to exist. People are absolutely costing lives by failing to move on this bill. Then let's have the fight. Let's have the committee here. I like a good scrap. I'm looking forward to having that debate. I'm looking forward to the history of other positions that have been taken by my friends across the aisle on how to dispose of nominations from the president. Happy to do that. But I want this bill passed. I want to be able to go back to the people in North Carolina and say, and we're doing everything we possibly can to save lives. That's what CARA does. That's why we need to act. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, would the gentleman who, yield? Who seeks the floor? I seek to ask Mr. President a, another question of my friend he, from North Carolina. Up. Mr. President, we were supposed to be here moving the bill forward. We need to make it clear that we were gonna vote on amendments on CARA today to draw down the backlog and move the bill. You decided to have the meeting off the floor so that we could move judicial nominations. We weren't going to take up any legislation there. I think that what we need to do is get back to the work of disposing of amendments, making the bill better potentially, and getting it to the House and getting it to the President's desk. That's what I'm talking about. This is the capacity. We have limited capacity in this chamber. You all know that. The procedural games that get played around here, the limitations of time are numerous. And we're just creating more of that. We're gumming up the works while people are dying. One person every six hours in the state of North Carolina is dying from a drug overdose. We delay by six hours, we're responsible for a life in North Carolina. These are lives that we can save. We need to dispose of the amendments on this bill and move it to the House. And I'm, Mr. President, I apologize if I'm angry, but when lives are involved, when youth is involved, I think it's time for us to do our job, and our job is to dispose of amendments and move this bill to the House of Representatives. Thank you. Mr. President, would my colleague yield for the question? Does the Senator yield? Yes, sir. I would ask my colleague, isn't it true that we have had debates in committee in the committee room while important discussions have been carried on here in other instances? Is that true or false? Sir, uh, Senator Schumer, it's true, but I, see, I, don't, see its, I don't see its relevance okay. to the task. Would the ahead. gentleman that's the yield? That's the problem, if I may, may completely answer the question. That's the problem with this process. I mean, I, I hear that. I see the kabuki dances going on, mm -hmm. but what I want to do is dispose of the amendments on the CARA bill and do our job. Let's do our job. Our job is to pass legislation, and in this case, save lives. So I get that we need to do the other things, but let's get to the task at hand. Let's do our jobs. I'm prepared to do the job. I'll stay here all weekend long. I'll work 24-7 until this bill gets passed. Why don't we focus on that and introduce a little humanity into the discussion? I get the procedural issues. I get what we're gonna to have to deal with. We need to have the debates in judiciary. I'm perfectly happy to do that. I want this bill passed. I want members to come down to this floor, pass amendments, draw down the queue, and send this bill to the president's desk. Let's do our jobs. I'm prepared to do my job today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, and through all of next week, if that's what it takes to get this done. I hope my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will too. Thank you, Mr. President. This